Lately, I've been messing around with smaller, cheaper hardware that was never really meant to be anyone's main computer. You know, stuff that usually lives under desks or in offices and then get forgotten about a few years later. Well, this is a Dell Wise client. I picked it up for about 70 bucks, which I guess is fine. Not an insane deal, but also not terrible considering what these usually go for on the secondhand market, especially with decent specs, storage, and an actual PSU. Now on paper, it's not really supposed to do anything locally. Instead, this thing is supposed to rely on a server or something like that. But I mean, looking at the ports it's got, the specs, and what it's actually capable of, it kind of raises an interesting question. I mean, how far could you realistically push something like this if you try to use it as a normal desktop? Well first, let's currently take a look at what I'm using for my main desktop. Now for context, this Wise client isn't really replacing a ancient computer. This is my current build and it's currently rocking a Ryzen 5 5500, 32GB of memory and a 2060 Super. It's capable for what I normally do, you know, multitasking, browsing, media, creative work and even the occasional game. And that's exactly why this comparison is interesting because the Dell Wise is coming from a very different place in terms of hardware philosophy. This thing was built to sip power, stay silent and just do one job very well, not to brute force its way through workloads. But we'll get into what that actually means on paper later. Now from here, the first thing to figure out is whether the hardware itself, especially the IO, can even fit into my existing setup without any conversions or stuff. So let's take a look at that. Around the back, the Wise client is surprisingly well equipped. There are three full-size display port outputs right here, which immediately stands out, especially for something this small. This alone also makes multi-monitor setup straightforward without adapters or weird compromises. Along with that, you've got a bunch of USB 3 ports for peripherals, Ethernet for a wired connection to the internet, which I will be using. We've got audio in and out, and there also seems to be what I think is a serial port. And then we've got power. On the front, we're working with similar ports. We've got two USB 2.0 ports. This one seems to be used for charging, which is cool. We've got a USB-C port, which I think also serves as a display port connector. And lastly, we've got these two headset jacks. Oh, and the power button. Now, honestly, this port selection is actually really decent. It's a more business first type of layout, but in a good way. Now on paper at least, there's nothing here that would actually stop it from dropping straight into my existing setup, which means the next step is to actually do that and see how good the specifications are on this thing. So let's get this thing plugged in. Under the hood, this wireless client is built around a Pentium J5005, paired with a single stick of 8GB of memory and we've also got 256GB of storage. Now, it's a low-power passively cooled system with no fans and no moving parts, which really makes it interesting from a power and noise perspective. This system was more built for efficiency, long uptimes, and just doing enough without wasting energy. The Pentium Silver CPU in this thing was definitely tuned for low wattage operation, and the storage is solid state, thankfully. So at least the system will be fast to an extent. You can definitely tell this form factor was meant to sit quietly on a desk or behind a monitor and just exist there. I've gone ahead and placed mine right above my Xbox. It fits perfectly though. Now, here's the main part of my workstation. I use two external drives. One is a hard drive that uses USB 3, and the other is a Samsung T7 SSD that uses USB-C. Since it's a USB-C and a USB 3.0 port at the front, I can literally just plug these right into the computer with no conversion needed. And with that, the Dell Weiss client dropped right into my setup just fine. Now let's turn this thing on and see what we're working with here. And yeah, it's kind of slow. Now it's not broken and it's not unusable, but it's slow in a way that's immediately noticeable. Everything does technically work of course, but there's a constant delay that reminds you that this isn't really a full desktop class system with a lot of power. And honestly, I'd say a lot of that comes down to Windows 11. For something that's supposed to be efficient and unobtrusive, Windows 11 definitely adds a layer of friction that doesn't really belong there in my opinion. Especially on hardware like Pentiums and Celerons. So before we can fairly judge whether the wires can replace my main PC, the operating system does have to change, because right now Windows 11 is clearly holding it back. So I've got my USB drive here loaded with a installer of Windows 10 LTSC. Now yes, I know it's not a USB drive, it's just an SD card to USB adapter, but it should be fine. But it's got the installer for Windows 10 LTSC, and that's the version of Windows, but without all that blower and garbage that comes in in newer Windows versions. 
So let's get this version installed and see how the performance is after this. To get LTSC installed, I went into the boot menu by pressing F12. This should apply to all Dell Wise clients and pretty much most Dell computers. I went through the typical install stuff and decided to just erase the entire SSD to start fresh. And after about only 10 minutes, we were in Windows 10 LTSC. And I mean, just already starting things off, stuff like the start menu and file explorer felt a lot more snappier and less chuggy than Windows 11. In fact, I even went as far as disabling the animations and stuff in Windows 10 to make the experience a little more snappy. The first thing I want to do is test out YouTube playback in both 1080p and 4K on the Dell Wise. This is something that I obviously do very frequently on my main PC. 1080p playback seemed to work just fine at 60fps. It was a pretty smooth experience as well compared to Windows 11 LTSC, as you guys saw in those previous clips. This pretty much felt exactly like how it would compared to my main desktop. Now, let's try 4K playback. And... Yeah, we can see the performance on this thing chug a little. 4K playback always seems to be a huge issue when it comes to low power machines like these, and honestly I wasn't even surprised at this. Now let's jump straight into gaming. We've got three of my most played titles installed on the Dell Wires. Trackmania Nations Forever, Half-Life 2 and Minecraft. So let's go ahead and give them all a shot on the Dell Wires. Each of these games were all tested at the respective lowest settings possible at a resolution of 1366 by 768 a standard laptop screen resolution. Starting off with Minecraft 1.21.11 in a new world, we got about 45 to 52 FPS after letting the chunks load in for a little while. This was a completely playable experience, honestly, on the integrated Intel UHD 605 graphics. Next up, we have Half-Life 2. Now to clarify, I usually play this game with friends in another version of the game called Synergy, but unfortunately I don't have the time to set that up properly for this video. The performance should be the same though, since they're pretty much the same game, and as we can see in the game while walking around the train station, we're hovering similar frame rates as Minecraft with 42 to 51 FPS. This is honestly a very fair experience. Now, lastly, let's try Trackmania Nations Forever. And as we can see, we're hitting a frame rate of 55 FPS, represented across all the maps. This is a very playable experience. So gaming is definitely possible on the Wise client with a little bit of tinkering around with certain game settings. Now, he won't be playing AAA titles on this, of course, and I don't really play AAA title games anyway on my main PC, but most lightweight games will be just fine. So, for the last part of using this thing, let's give DaVinci Resolve a shot. I've loaded into the project file for my 2013 Mac Pro video, which you should totally go check out, and the entire application genuinely feels like it's going to blow up. So, I'm kind of concerned as to how this is going to turn out when it comes to playback. I let all the previews load in for the thumbnails and everything in the project, so I went to press play and... Yikes, we are hovering over 15 FPS for the playback. Now, even with the playback set to 720p, we're still getting an incredibly choppy playback. And we're not even reaching the 460 FPS playback that we're meant to be getting. The Dell Weiss definitely isn't an editing machine and it pretty much shows with this. So we're at the end here for this video with the Dell Wise client. Can it really replace my main PC? Well, for me, not fully. The Wise client can handle the basics surprisingly well. You know, with browsing, media, light multitasking, and even a bit of gaming if you want to be realistic and dull everything back. For day-to-day -day low pressure use, it works better than you'd expect from something this small and low power. But once you step outside of that, things like editing and DaVinci Resolve or anything that really needs real CPU, GPU headroom, the limitations show up fast with this thing. It's usable but it's never comfortable and it constantly reminds you of what this thing is. That doesn't make it bad though, it just means it has a very specific place in my opinion. As a silent low power desktop, a secondary machine, a home server or a tinkering box, it actually makes a lot of sense to get one of these. As a full replacement for a modern desktop, not unless your workload is extremely light. So, should you buy one? If you're expecting it to replace a real PC, probably not. But if you want something cheap, quiet, efficient, and surprisingly capable within its limits, a Dell Wise client is way more interesting than it has any right to be. 
So we're going to be set sailing with this thing for a couple more videos as I believe it'd be an awesome thing to check out. Next, we're going to try turn this thing into a Minecraft server, so stick around for that. If you liked what you saw there, consider liking the video and maybe even subscribing. Feel free to join the Discord server too, I'll leave that in the comments below. And so, I'll see you guys in my next video.